Good morning, folks. We've got a ton of eye candy today at the geophysical, astrophysical, stellar, micronova, and massive object level. We also have a bit of an unknown when it comes to space weather associated with more solar flaring. Let's dive into it, starting with the last 24 hours on our star. Big filament has remained stable on the south and will directly face Earth tonight. The departing southern active region sunspots continued firing solar flares, including an X-class flare, and that is where the uncertainty lies. Dimming the sun to show the flare point over on the right side, the sunspots are departing, but not gone yet, and have continued to erupt as they turn away. Flare flash there at 131 angstroms of light. An amazing electrical activity within the sunspot group as the flare erupted as well. You can see the Earth scale for reference of the size of the coronal lightning. At first, it appeared no CME was produced from the event, but it appears that a slow-moving ejection has in fact occurred. At this point, it's still unclear if the edge is heading our way, but that will be the primary space weather analysis point today. If there is such a chance for a glancing blow, we'll share that update as soon as possible. But now let's move on to the science and we'll start lightly. Today the Parker Solar Probe and the Solar Orbiter satellites will join up to monitor the same solar wind from different angles. They're hoping to get a better understanding of the fine detail plasma physics within the stream of particles racing away from the sun. Moving to helioseismic observations of the sun's surface versus interior, they're trying to learn more about its differential rotation, the fact that not all latitudes of the sun rotate at the same speed, and they determined that a critical factor in how the sun operates is a wildly similar temperature across those latitudes. Between the sun's poles and equator, there's only a 7 degree difference, with the poles being the hottest. Interesting and raises as many questions as it gives answers. Up next, we've got IMERG with the precipitation patterns and trailing 30-day average. Such a visualization of long-term patterns doesn't really exist, but this 20-year data run might be the first, and it shows how subtly the major rain bands shift over time. Interesting, up next we've got more space phenomena blamed on black holes. This time the compact symmetrical object said to be short-lived polar jet ejections from a shredded object. Hopefully we caught last night's video on the black hole image and black holes in general, going to eventually need another explanation for this one. Lastly on the article front, they caught a neutron star jet event in progress and are breaking down the emission. But what they leave out is what's happening closer into the star. They already know that in these events it's not just the jet excitement, but a micronova from the star itself. The ejecta in this almost nano nova wouldn't even reach Mercury if something that small happened on the sun. Just wanted to give a bit of context for the article that just came out. Lastly, folks, overall, don't forget we'll be doing our second private live stream on April 1st for subscribers of the Observer Review, our monthly e-magazine. First one was about a hundred times better than these public ones we have here on YouTube. Looking like this may be an e-magazine and private live stream thing moving forward. Sign up at the link below. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.